Teraz czas na firmę, która w ostatnich latach narobiła chyba najwięcej zamieszania na rynku. Firma Docker, której produkty są, której projekty są najczęściej pobieranymi produktami z internetu w milionach sztuk. Nasz kolejny gość jest z branży IT od 24 lat. Obecnie pracuje w firmie Docker, który jest dyrektorem sprzedaży na rynkach wschodzących. Wcześniej wielokrotnie pełnił funkcje menadżerskie dla tak znanych firm jak Siemens, Oracle, Info, Salesforce, Tipco. W Docker wraz ze swoim zespołem dba o interesy i rozwija biznes na rynkach Europy Wschodniej, Środkowego Wschodu i Afrykańskich. Sasza Scholing. Powitajmy brawami. Hello, thank you and uh, good day. Thank you for your attendance. Together with me today on the stage is uh, my beloved colleague Andreas. Um, Andreas is a uh, is our sales engineer and um, well we together like you um, to introduce into docker and our concept um, in general let me introduce ourselves as we are a company that really is very much focused and fixed into the spirit of open source and uh, we need the clicker by the way uh, you, you have it so great is it on? can you hear me yes yeah good okay You're not that loud than I am, but that's good. Um, so we will explain to you a little how different the concept of Docker is comparing to some other concepts, what we like, what we do, what our architecture is. And uh, so let's start. Yeah, so um, what is important to know that, um, that we are only four years old, right? I mean, four years for us, it's a long, long time. Um, Oh, that's loud. <laughs> um, and if you have seen um, how Docker did started four years ago, it was basically just a five minutes presentation that this little guy did. It's our CTO, Solomon Hikes. He presented Docker in a five minute stage on a Python event. And after that, the journey started. His basic idea was to deliver something like, we call it a platform as a service. You are familiar with platform as a service. You have seen some slides in red about the platform as a service before. There was his main approach before. But then he decided, okay, I'm getting so much attention with this technology because everyone was approaching him and it said, hey, make it available for everyone. So he decided to create a new company, um, which is called Docker. And then the journey started. The challenge for us is, and this slide is really old, I do not have the updated slides from the DockerCon. This slide shows six billion downloads or pulls from our uh, Docker Hub. When you see the momentum with the presentation, it started. <laughs> Is it working now? Yes. Can you hear me? No. No, it's fine. Let's stay with test, the microphone. Test, test, test. Let's stay with uh, the microphone. That's okay. No worries. Yeah, that's okay. So when you take a look at the, it was in 2013 when he did the presentation and then the boom started. And now we are almost at uh, 12 billion downloads, so every four to five weeks we have 1.5 billion pulls from the Docker Hub. You can see that the momentum is big. Um, for us, it's really important um, that we open source every single component that is part of the Docker engine. So everything we do is open source. Um, for us, it's a challenge um, to act with every vendor out there because every vendor is approaching us and wants to do something with Docker. It's uh, every software vendor out there, it's every operating system vendor out there. And our, let's say, key vision is we want to enable you to have all your applications running in containers. I mean, the total mark potential of containerization in general is 98% of all IT workloads. So you see that there are new operating systems coming into Docker world, and we are delivering, let's say, one single tool. It's the Docker Command to control all these different operating systems. And uh, as you can see on this slide, where you see a couple of, uh, of logos um, in the slide, there was a huge momentum about uh, building up the Docker ecosystem. So the Docker ecosystem no. is uh, growing in, in many places. And um, As mentioned before, for us it is the most important thing, whatever, whatever you're doing, if you're talking about a security tool, if you're talking about um, 
any add-on to the Docker container world, it should be something we are open to. We don't want to lock in people into any kind of vendors. So if you change your strategy, if you change your strategy from the cloud to on-prem or the other way around, if you have a hybrid concept, if you have a change your security layer, if you change your networking provider, whatever the change might be, I think, or for us it is uh, most important to see that it still stays open source, that it is open, because we as Docker, as we are a brand new company, figured out that new technology comes up very fast and we don't want to prevent anybody from using a new technology. So we try to be open also for the next generation of technology that is coming up that we see as operating systems and other technologies in the world. And the great thing about the Docker ecosystem is that it's growing day by day and uh, we have a website where you can see all the um, vendors that work together with us. You can download that stuff, you can use that stuff. And um, the good thing if you, if you work with us is that at the end of the day, we guarantee for maintaining vice versa with a vendor um, that you have an environment that is working in a way. But as mentioned, if you change it, if you're not happy with it, um, you are fine to change it anyway within some minutes and sometimes or days or weeks um, without taking any effort. So that's the basic concept and this ecosystem is growing and growing and it's so simple to, to change uh, layers in, in Docker that um, it's even sometimes like going into an app store with, with your Apple device and getting a new app and then using it minutes afterwards. So it's, it's really simple and um, I think that's the biggest opportunity and the biggest flexibility around the containerization itself. It's about the speed and the flexibility. Yeah, I think it works now. Oh yeah, it yeah. works, great. Good. So uh, what we see is on the market right now is um, that there are a lot of IT vendors out there that are trying to force you into a specific direction when it comes to containers. They tell you, you have to do a decision now. It needs to be done now because uh, it's the right time to do containerization. The thing we tell you as Docker is, don't do anything too early, because this market is growing and developing so fast. So many things are changing. We even as Docker, we don't know what will happen in a year from now, right? Our internal roadmap is only six months, and that's the, the target that we are approaching and, and working on to release new features and availability, yeah, right? And, th and that's not why we are not unprofessional or don't have a vision. We just want <laughs> to keep ourselves as flexible as possible. And you cannot imagine how many feature requests we get day by day to make that Docker stuff bigger and more modern. And so we really try to keep ourselves as flexible as possible. And yeah, you have a, you have a chance to control your own flexibility. And as you correctly mentioned, you have the choice to go um, with more security or more speed. You have the choice uh, if you go with Linux or Windows or other operating systems that you're going to support. Um, you can have OpenShift, you can have Platform as a Service, you can have Azure, you can have Mac OS, you can have anything. You can go with Mesosphere, you can go with Kubernetes, you can use Swarm from Docker. So anything you can imagine is provided and possible and supported and uh, also if you're going to the cloud and uh, if you're happy with AWS, that's fine. If you want to change to Azure, that's also fine. You can do that with our concept as you like it. And that's the end of the day. Um, a decision, yes, there has to be a decision, but the decision is if you go to containers or not, not the way you do it. Um, this is a decision that will be changing because the IT infrastructure and the IT ecosystem is evolving so fast that this change is, or this decision is nothing that lasts for a long time. It's not a decision about going into a container. I think this is a wave that is not stoppable any longer. Yeah, correct. And I think what's, what's really important to mention is um, don't let yourself force into long time contracts, right? I've seen customers doing decision on containers for the next five years. I mean, it's crazy, five years, uh, I don't know what will be in five years. Maybe we will no longer have computers. 
I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, so we, um, we are four years old. So exactly. doing a five-year <laughs> contract uh, five years ago was not a good decision because uh, nobody knew that, that Docker was existing five years ago. Think about uh, other th stuff like big data and companies like Cloudera Hortonworks five years ago. Who had a knowledge about those companies? Nobody. Right. So our, our um, mind share is a five-year contract in these times doesn't make sense. It's co-productive. Exactly. So whatever you do, don't do it uh, like if everything will run in the future on Docker within the next year. If you're a startup, I would agree. But if you're an enterprise, I, I, I bet you will not run everything on container next year. If you do, congratulations, you will be our reference customer number one. Um, so it's important um, to mention that beside the concept of platform as a service and infrastructure as a service, you have seen a lot about that in the presentation before. We introduced a new concept, it's called container as a service, right? I mean, some vendors are starting to copy this concept, which is good, so it looks like everyone likes this concept. But yep. the idea is basically to make you independent of wherever you're running the lifecycle of a container. So container as a service is focusing on the whole lifecycle of your application, how to build them, how to ship them, and how to bring them into production. One thing to mention is, uh, as you're familiar with, we started with the Linux world. Um, we're using all the capabilities in, in the Linux world. The only thing we do is um, we are putting an API on top to make it really easy to isolate the process into a namespace with C groups and things like that. So what most of you don't know is um, um, that we worked a lot with Microsoft in the background because three years ago, Microsoft didn't know anything about containers. The Windows kernel was not even contained already. So they invested a lot of money and engineering effort to making the Windows kernel uh, container ready. So they do have now C groups and namespaces, if you have ever heard about that in the Windows space. Um, and the, the thing we do is we make it so easy for everyone that is using Docker to use the same command, to use the same Docker file, and start using containers on the Windows platform as well. There's nothing you have to learn on top, right? The only thing you change is the is the base image that you're using in the Windows world. Um, this slide, I could talk endlessly about this slide, but it was what this slide is telling you is um, that the Docker engine itself, it's only managing the containers that are running on your operating system. The reason why I did highlight this layer running below the Docker engine as gray layer is exactly what we see in the whole IT market because Docker is the friend and enemy of everyone. Why is that? Because we decouple you as a customer with your application from the whole underlying infrastructure. And now you have a mighty tool to decide where your workload is running. It doesn't have to be on any specific Linux distribution, right? Linux for us, we only use the kernel. We only use the namespaces, cgroups, capabilities to run Docker Engine, and that's it. We have no opinion of if it's Ubuntu, if it's CentOS, if it's Red, Red Hat or Zuse or whatever you want to use. You can use all of them as long as they have a specific version of, of the Linux kernel. But this is a big challenge for a lot of vendors out there. Uh, one you have seen before the presentation because they're earning a lot of money with this operating system. And I understand that, right? Um, the other challenge starts with the infrastructure. I mean, you decide. You can have cheap hardware to run a Docker container. You can have a virtual infrastructure to run your containers. Or you can go to bare metal systems, right? We've seen a lot of savings in uh, bare metal systems compared to virtual machines. That's true. That's yeah. true. Some customers save by, um, well, 5 to 80 percent sometimes of their virtual machine environment, which you can imagine is quite a lot of money. For sure, um, you still have some efforts because you changed the, uh, the managing of virtual machines into managing of containerization, but you uh, get two big assets. One is um, that we are open source, and the other one is uh, that, um, well, you save a lot of money at the end of the day. So um, that's, that's quite a great thing. And um, there was also ongoing cost because all of you are familiar with um, with virtual machines and that some vendors uh, have penalties on virtual environments if you have the wrong one and so on. And you can get out of that trap by using stuff like, like Docker, 
relatively easy. So you save a lot of money at the end of the day. Um, even though we are, our mission is not to replace VMware or any other virtual machine provider, um, our mission is to give you an opportunity and we cannot substitute them everywhere and we don't want to do that. But um, it shows there is an alternative and an alternat to have an alternative is something that is always good. Um, also in the IT industry, it makes the world a bit more colorful and um, that's what we love to see. Yeah. And another trend that we see uh, right now when customers start with containers is they also start to focus on the application and start to drill down, okay, what are the library components and the packages I really need on my operating system um, to make my application up and running? So you see things like Alpine, which is a very thin base operating system layer. It's only two megabyte in size um, as a start uh, from a Linux system. We did an announcement for Linux Kit, so everyone can build their own Linux now. Welcome. Um, you can be a Linux distributor if you want. The idea behind that is to give you a Linux system that only has the capabilities, let's say, to run a container D environment and to run containers. Not more, not less, right? We don't need full-blown Linux distributions. And with that, you get a lean operating system. It's the most secure operating system that you can build. And we as Docker said, we are a small company, and we cannot say what is the best and most secure Linux operating system. So this is an initiative we did together with IBM, with Microsoft, with the Linux Foundation, with the Cloud Native, and, and, and all these people are involved there, HPE, and so on and so on. So we're working together with all these companies to make Docker adoptable everywhere, because we do not have Linux everywhere. Right. The thing with Docker is, and that's the most important part for you, whatever you do with containers, you must be portable. No one should force you into any specific system environments. If you plan to go to the cloud, go to the cloud. If you use Docker and containers, you have an exit key. I mean, it's so important. If you bet your whole life on any specific cloud providers, I will not stop you, right? But I don't know what happens in five years from now. So if you run your applications in a Docker container and you have a central registry where you can pull these images from, you have the key to go everywhere. And that's a mighty tool for you as a customer to decide where your applications are running and where not. So one of the cloud providers is getting too expensive. Stop the containers. Go anywhere else. Or go back to on-prem. Go to virtual machines. Go to bare metal. Or use laptop or Raspberry Pis. I don't know. In the future, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think one important key message for you, and I think we are running out of time. I don't know how much time we, we have left. Right. Sure we are, but uh, we, we start a little later, so I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other announcements we did is the Mobi project, right? As everyone started to, to go with the wave of containerization, everyone was forking the Docker engine, everyone was selling their products as if Docker was inside, but there was no Docker inside. Everyone was changing the software, which was a problem for us because everyone was blaming us. If something is not working in Docker, it's Docker's fault but you're using fork. So to get control over this, we know as Docker, as the mark potential is 98% of all IT workload, we will never ever be the only engine on the market that is doing containerization. What we are focusing on is to make it the most secure platform to do containerization. And we outsource every single component that we're using within the Docker engine into a new project. It's called the Mobi project. So all of you can now build your own Docker engine. Isn't that great? I mean, it's crazy for us as a vendor to give everything for free so you can build it. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. The problem, as you've seen in the ecosystem slide, is we have so many feature requests you cannot imagine, right? And we cannot that's do them by ourselves uh, uh, alone. No, that's we heavily rely on the community, and uh, this is also my, my wish to you. If you would like to contribute to some of the projects, do it, right? Um, if you want to build your own Docker engine, do it. But now it is absolutely clear when from Docker, what is from Docker, and what not. That's right? true. That's true. And uh, if you ask yourself, well, how do those guys earn some money? Um, at the end of the day, uh, it's relatively easy. We take care for, for Docker. So we are Docker. We take the third level responsibility. 
We have a lot of partners outside, uh, like HP, for example, um, that do the first and second level support for us, and also a lot of local partners. That's why, why we are here today. And for sure, we have a management tool in our so-called enterprise edition, which is not open source, but you're not stuck with it. If you're not fine with it, cancel it. Don't use it any longer. That's okay. That's your decision. That's our philosophy. It's always your decision. If you go with us, yes, we can help you. We can maintain you. We take responsibility for the Docker ecosystem from first to third level support. We do it with, with local partners. We do it with cloud providers. We do it with anybody. We can do it ourselves. We provide a lot of tools that help, especially enterprise companies, to administrate and to use your container environment and at the end of the day also the usage of your hardware in the most appropriate and efficient way. But as mentioned, it's never a vendor lock-in. We are happy if you, if you go with us and we try to make you as satisfied as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, yes, we stay for Docker. And wherever you find Docker, also in other packages, it's Docker and so it's us. Um, and it's um, related to us. Um, but also, this concept is something that doesn't bind you on, on Docker as a company. So that's, that's a very important thing. Yeah, exactly. And if you're interested to see more, uh, why we as Docker say, okay, if you want to do containerization in a security way, then Docker is by, by far the best platform you can invest your money into. Why? Because even Gartner is saying now, if you run an application inside a container, it's x times more secure than running it on a bare metal system or in a virtual machine. If you want to know more about that, I'm happy to, to give you an overview about that on our booth. Um, but we like the word safer apps, so we are focusing on to make your application as secure as possible so it will never ever be affected by things that did happen last week, for example, right? that you have library components that your applications don't need to, uh, that uh, can hack your systems. So we like the idea of giving you your application the Iron Man costume, right? If you're using Docker, you run an application in Iron Man. Um, I don't know if Iron Man was ever, uh, <laughs> ever someone uh, destroyed him or something like that. Uh, I, I have haven't no seen idea, all the movies. I, I think this guy is indestructible. Yeah. And uh, so we are not hacked yet. And um, this is one of the major questions, as you correctly said. Whenever we stand in front of customers, 90% uh, of the questions are around security yeah. because there is a lot of uncertainty. And so it's very important for us to make it crystal clear that Docker is not less secure, it's even more secure, especially if you're talking about running old legacy applications into containers. It makes them more modern and more secure than they've ever been in the last 15 years they are existing. So um, that's a very big asset on top yeah. of all. So some last sentence on that. We like the Iron Man costume, the idea of that. So what we did is we put our Moby Well into this costume, and that is exactly what we offer you, right? To protect your business which should be your application, hopefully. Thanks a lot, right? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. So um, <laughs> if this was not enough information and if you get more and want to talk to us directly, we have a booth out there. Uh, so you're free, you're invited to talk to us, even though we run out of t-shirts, but I think uh, <laughs> a fruitful conversation is also worth visiting us. And we thank you for your attendance. Wish you a great, great event. Uh, we love that open source event here in Poland, so it's not the first time we are here and we'll be here again and again. And have a great event. Thank you for your attention and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.